Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about Ubuntu 22.04 LTS versus Fedora 36. Myself Mohammad Zubair and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. First of all, I'll start with my Ubuntu 22.04. If we talk about the base, well Ubuntu is based on Debian and all of its flavor are also dependent or you can say based on Debian. Now I'll talk about the interface. Ubuntu comes with the simplest of the interfaces. As you can see, we have some of the options or you can say some of the controls over the top right corner and in the middle we have time date and if you just click on it it will open up calendar for you not only that you will get all the notifications in here as well other than that on the top left corner you have activities button if you just click on it or even if you press your super key it will open all the activities that are opened into your system in front of you other than that we have some of the applications that are docked on the taskbar which is in vertical order here if you see, we have some of the applications and the changes in previous versions of Ubuntu, we did not see these much applications by default docked on the taskbar. But now we have more number of applications. Other than that, on the desktop, we have a home folder or you can say directory in Linux distributions language. So that was a brief introduction or you can say brief info about the interface. Now let's talk about the desktop environment. Ubuntu uses Genome desktop environment. If I go to my desktop icon settings or even if I open my display settings, it will open the general settings of my Ubuntu. If you scroll down and go to your about section, here if you see here it says Genome version 42.0. It means the desktop version that we are using at the moment is Genome with version 42.0. So as we have talked about the desktop environment, now I'll talk about different flavors that comes with Ubuntu. For example, if you do not want to use Genome desktop environment, you want to use KDE, you can download Kubuntu because that comes with KDE Plasma as a default desktop environment. Then we have Zubuntu that comes with XFCE desktop environment and we have many more. So you have a lot of choices in terms of desktop environment with Ubuntu, but for that purpose, you have to download a different Linux distribution, which will be based on Ubuntu, but obviously it will have a slight difference with Ubuntu. Now I'll talk about the default applications. So I'll just click on show applications button. And these are the default applications. So for our documents, we get LibreOffice, which is free and open source, and we get it by default in our Ubuntu. Other than that, for our browser, we get Mozilla Firefox. For our mail client, we get Thunderbird Mail. And for our MP3, or you can say music files, we get Rhythmbox. Then obviously, we have our Ubuntu Software Center. Other than that, you have some of the utilities that you can use. For example, we have System Monitor, Language Support, Driver Support, and many other things. Now, let's talk about the kernel version that Ubuntu 22.04 uses. For that purpose, I'll open my terminal into my Ubuntu, which is right here. I will just open this one. And in here, I just need to run one simple command, and that is uname space hyphen r. If you just hit enter, here is the version of our kernel that we are using at this moment. Well, because Having a best kernel or a better kernel makes sure that your background processes run smoother and you have better experience from your Linux distribution. After the kernel version, now I'll talk about the release cycle. Well, Ubuntu has two versions in terms of its release cycle. Regular release and long-term support, which is also known as LTS. And as you might have seen the topic of this video that says Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, it means we are using Ubuntu 22.04 long-term support version. Well, in terms of regular release, it gets released at the interval of six months and gets supported for the nine months. On the other hand, if we talk about the long-term release cycle or release version, 
It comes at an interval of two years and gets supported for the next five years. As we just got Ubuntu 22.04, so it will get supported till 2027. Regular releases brings you new features and new software versions, but the LTS releases holds on the older version. And that makes it a great choice for people who do not like to have frequent changes and they prefer stability. That was all about the release cycle. Now I'll talk about the community support and for that I'll open my browser. While having a great, stable and mature community support is very necessary, especially for the beginners. Because Linux distributions are not easy to use if you have no experience with using Linux distributions. So in terms of Ubuntu, we get two very prominent forums. First one is Ask Ubuntu, which is from Ubuntu itself. And the second one is Ubuntu forums. So I will just search for that. I will just write here Ubuntu forums, hit enter. So I will open this one and I'll open my Ask Ubuntu as well. Both of these forums are Ubuntu and you get a lot of support in here. Well, let's say you get into any problem and you want some support. So for that purpose, you can come to any of these forums or any of these community supports and you will get the answers of your problem as a lot of people that use Ubuntu or similar Linux distribution will be there to answer your queries. For example, if you see here, a lot of people have posted different questions or their problems. And here, if you see, it says, why is the Flatpak repo folder so huge? And here we have three answers that are given by different people. In terms of Ubuntu forums, you will get all the latest news, latest features releases, and all the information from Ubuntu itself. As you can see, we have different topics and they are categorized here as well. And now let's move ahead and let's see how much resources our Ubuntu is using at the moment. For that purpose, again, I need to open my terminal. Here it is. I will just open this one. And in that, we'll use a utility that is known as top. I will just write here top, hit enter. So here we have all the information about the resources that are being used at this moment into my Ubuntu. These are different processes and these are the percentage of resources that are being used by each process. At the moment, we are using around 1000 80 megabyte of my RAM, which is not a lot of hardware resource consumption. So we can say that Ubuntu is not as heavy onto our hardware resources as some other Linux distribution. So even if you have an average machine with average hardware resources, you can still consider to download and install Ubuntu onto that particular machine. I will just get out of this and at the end, I'll talk about hardware requirements to install Ubuntu. Well, in terms of your RAM, you should have 4 GB of RAM for smoother experience. But even if you have 2 GB of RAM, it's enough. In terms of hard disk space, you should have 20 GB of space in terms to install your Ubuntu onto your hardware machine. And that was all about the Ubuntu. Now I will get out of it and we'll move towards the Fedora. And let's discuss this and let's see what do we have there. So this is our Fedora and this is how it looks like. So again, first of all, if we talk about its base, well, Fedora is based on Red Hat. Now I'll talk about the interface. Well, we do not see a lot of difference in terms of the interface between Fedora and Ubuntu. As you can see, we have some of the controls in here that we had in Ubuntu as well. And in the middle, we have time and date. And if you just click on it, you will again get calendar and notifications in here. I will just get out of this and here we have our activities button just like in Ubuntu. The only difference here is in terms of the desktop background and in terms of the applications dog onto our desktop. So this was a bit of difference in terms of the interface. And now if we talk about the desktop environment, while well, you will be surprised to know that Fedora 36 is also using Genome desktop environment by default. If I just right click onto my desktop, and now if I go to my settings, from here, I'll go to my about section. This is it. And here, if you see here, it says Genome version 42.0. It means Fedora is also using latest Genome version in terms of the desktop environment. Well, as we have seen that Fedora is using desktop environment as Genome. So what if there are other desktop environment for Fedora? 
well you will be surprised to know that with fedora spins you can get your favorite desktop environment while installing fedora linux you can choose to go with kde plasma xfce mate lxqt cinnamon lxde etc so in terms of desktop environment with fedora you have a lot of choices now i'll talk about the default applications so for that purpose either you can click on this activities button or you can press your super key after that here we have our taskbar and in taskbar we have four of applications docked we have our browser calendar files and our software center and here we have show applications button and if you just click on this one it will open all the applications that are there by default for example for your documents just like ubuntu you get leap day office then you have some other utilities like calculator system monitor your terminal then you have your cheese and you have your rhythm box as well if we talk about the kernel version that fedora uses i will open my terminal and we'll see what version fedora is using at the moment again i'll use the same command that i used into my ubuntu and the command is uname space hyphen r hit enter well in terms of fedora we are using 5.174 in ubuntu we were using 5.15 so fedora is using a bit of latest kernel version i will just get out of this and now i'll talk about the release cycle well a new fedora version gets released every six month and each fedora release gets supported for 13 months only which means that between 6 to 13 months you must perform an upgrade onto your existing fedora in order to get the latest and best features and updates that was all about the release cycle and now i'll talk about the community support for that purpose i'll open my mozilla firefox here it is i will just open this one and in here i'll show you those community forums that are there by default from fedora first one is ask fedora just like ask ubuntu so i will just write here ask fedora i'll open a new tab and in that i'll open fedora forums just like ubuntu forums and we have one more i will just write here fedora discussion hit enter so these three platforms are from fedora and they are considered as best when you get into any problem and to find a solution so in here in fedora discussion you will have all the news and announcement and you will have all the discussion basically it's a blog spot or you can say you will get different articles with respect to your fedora here you can see different people have participated in different topics and different discussions i will just get out of this and now let's talk about fedora forums well again in here you will get all the information and all the latest news with respect to your fedora and different people have posted different topics in here and in ask fedora you will get the answer of your questions just like ask ubuntu you post your questions in there and people respond to your problems and you get the solutions not only that even if you do not use any of these three forums you will get a lot of applications from different people that will provide you different solution with respect to any problem you might face with respect to your fedora because fedora and ubuntu are some of very prominent linux distributions in the collection of all the linux distributions so i will just get out of this and now let's talk about the hardware resource usage for that purpose i'll open my terminal which is right here and in here i'll use a command which is stop to check hardware resource usage well at the moment my fedora is using 1300 megabyte of my ram here we have all the information about processes and the resources that are being used by each process and if we compare it with ubuntu well fedora is using a bit of more number of hardware resources but these are not as much as some other linux distribution that use a lot of hardware resources so in terms of hardware resource usage i would recommend you that you can still install this one even if you have an average hardware machine with you i will just get out of this and now at the end i'll talk about the hardware requirement well just like ubuntu you should have 2 gigabytes of ram but for the smoother experience you should consider to have 4 gigabytes of ram and in terms of your hard disk space you should have 20 gigabytes to install it and that was all about the fedora and that brings us to the end of comparison of both of these linux distribution 
now if i were to conclude i would say there is no clear winner because both of these linux distributions are very prominent you will get the support with respect to every problem and you have almost same desktop environment you get almost same default applications the only difference that you might see with respect to both of these Linux distribution is the base. Ubuntu is based on Debian and we get dot .dev packages and we get APD package manager. And in terms of Fedora, it is based on Red Hat and we get DNF as a package manager. So this was a bit of difference between both of these Linux distribution. Otherwise, you can go with any one as per your liking. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope now that now you have better understanding about the differences and the comparisons between both of these prominent Linux distributions. If that is the case, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. We'll get back to you in the next video. Till then, take care.